hey what's going on if you are thinking of selling your condo you need to watch this video i'm going to go over the 10 things you should know when it comes to selling your condo quickly and for the highest possible price and we're going to get into it right now Hey, thanks for checking out this video. My name's Alex Maloney. I'm a real estate broker here in Toronto, Canada. And in this video, we're gonna talk about the different things that you should do when you're getting your condo ready to sell and prepare to go on the market. If you like this video, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notifications so that you get notified when my new videos do come out. Now, the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do when it comes to selling your condo is figure out what is it worth. And we do that here in Toronto, Canada by calling it CMA. And all that is, is a comparative market analysis. Now, all a CMA is, is that your realtor or myself, if you decide to hire me, which you should obviously, is to do a bit of research and find out what other similar properties have sold within your building or in the neighborhood. So the first step that I take personally for my clients is that I wanna find another condo that is ideally the same floor plan in your building that has sold recently. Now, this is gonna give me the best idea in terms of the market value and what somebody's willing to pay. If that isn't an option, the second option is to find another unit in the same building that has sold recently. So that may be a slightly different size, maybe a different floor plan or a different side of the building, but that's the next step in terms of doing the CMA. And the third step for me, if I have to do it, is to look at other similar condos in the same neighborhood that are of a similar type of building quality and obviously the same size and have also sold recently. Now, when you're doing the CMA, there are going to be different factors that will add or subtract from the value of your condo. For example, if you have parking in your condo, that's going to be anywhere from a fifty to a hundred thousand dollar value. If you have a locker, that could be from anywhere from three to ten, maybe even fifteen thousand in the high end buildings. Other things that are going to be adding value to your property are going to be upgrades that you've done. If you have a clear view, if you're on a higher floor, that's also going to add more value to your condo. If you've got two condos one on a low floor, one on a high floor. The high one is obviously gonna to to demand more of a value typically. When you buy these in a new construction condo, they can be anywhere from 1,000 to 2,000 to $5,000 a floor. Other factors that are gonna to contribute to the value of your condo are obviously going to be the condition of the property. So if you're an owner occupied and you've lived in the condo and you've taken care of it, that's gonna bode well for you as opposed to another condo which has had tenants for many years and there's a lot more wear and tear and it's dirty and it just doesn't show very well. Other factors you've got to look for are going to be the actual floor plan itself. Is it a desirable floor plan? There's always going to be good floor plans and not so good floor plans. Other factors that are going to add value to your condo will be the view. So if you're up on a higher floor with an unobstructed view, that's going to be more valuable than a condo on a lower floor and you're looking across the street into another building. Maybe the natural light isn't as good. So these are all the things that you need to consider when it comes to the value of your property and obviously the current market conditions, supply, demand, interest rates, etc. And finally, one other thing that you may want to consider is that if you have done any upgrades to your condo, there's going to be a value add for that. So if you are in an older building, 10, 15, 20 years old, and you've done some renovation to the kitchens or the bathrooms, obviously it's going to be more valuable than a similar condo in your building, which hasn't done those upgrades and still has original finishes. So as a seller, you need to understand the factors you do control and the things that you don't control when it comes to selling your property. Number two on that list is going to be to declutter and depersonalize your space. So decluttering, you want to take out all the old stuff that you don't need, old clothes, minimize the design and the look and the feel of the condo. So when buyers are coming through, there's not too much stuff around. And you also need to depersonalize the space. So if you have a lot of uh, pictures, certificates, awards or degrees on your wall, you really need to take away your personality from the condo because it's really now about the buyer imagining themselves in your condo and buying it for them. If you have ever been to a model suite of new condo development, for example, you know what I mean. When buyers are shopping for condos, they don't really want to see your stuff. So you need to remove most of your photos, any trophies or personal items. The best approach is to remove everything from your bathroom counters and shelves, then put back just a few decorative items like fresh white towels, perfumes, bath salts, but no personal care product should be left out for display. Number three on the list is storage. And by storage, I mean closets and kitchen cupboards. So I highly recommend you get rid of about 50% of the items in your closet. So the closet in the hallway for jackets and shoes or your bedroom closet, if you have a walk-in closet, remove about 50% of the items because I often go through condos with clients 
the closets are full and it doesn't give the buyers a good impression thinking there's not enough space if they were to buy your property. The second thing when it comes to storage is the storage in the kitchen cupboards. A lot of the kitchens nowadays can be quite small, especially in the newer buildings or the smaller condos. So basically just get rid of about half the stuff that you have in your kitchen cupboards and your closets. Make it feel a lot more spacious because the buyers are going to go through the closets, they're going to open drawers, they're going to see what's there, see if there's enough space for what they want. So number four on the list is to fix and repair any issues that you may have in your condo. After a number of years of living in the condo, things are going to get worn out, things are going to need replacing or fixing, so it's always a good idea to do this before you go in the market. Some of the bigger ticket items include worn out or damaged floors. If the kitchen is outdated, if you're in an older condo, maybe the appliances need some updating as well or repairing. Uh, things like the countertops could also be a big issue for some buyers. So in the bathroom, if you have cracked tiles, definitely a good idea to replace those before you go in the marketplace. Check the corking around the tub, around the shower. That's a quick, easy fix to rip that out. And also check the grout in. That's a quick, easy fix up and repair that gives a fresh look to your bathroom. So number five on the list, guys, is to give your condo a fresh coat of paint. If you've been living there for a number of years, there's gonna be scuff marks and dings and little dents maybe that need to be repaired and repainted. So I definitely would recommend giving your place a paint if it needs it. If you have dark walls, um, if you don't have a lot of natural light, I would definitely suggest to paint your condo white or an off-white. Take a look at your walls and maybe consider doing a paint job before you go on the market. Number six on the list is to clean the condo. Hire some professional cleaners to come in and spend a few hours to clean the whole place from top to bottom. Definitely would recommend it. You'd be surprised how many places I visit and the place is just not properly clean. And who, at the end of the day, who really wants to go into a crappy, dirty condo? Nobody. So your chances of selling are gonna be way higher if you have a clean condo. So number seven on the list is to do with lighting. Nobody wants to go into a dark, dingy condo. So if you are listing in the winter time where it gets dark around 5, 6 p.m., you need to make sure you have adequate lighting. So I'd reassess your existing lighting and you need to upgrade that possibly by putting in new lights, putting in brighter bulbs in some of your existing lights that you have already or getting new light fixtures. For example, in the kitchen, sometimes they may just have one pendant light. You can get a fixture that has one attachment, but it's got five lights with that. So that will give you a lot more light and it makes a huge difference in terms of the impact and the feeling that people get when they walk into your condo. It makes a big, big difference. So look at your lighting and reanalyze that. So number eight on the list is staging. Maybe you're an investor and the tenant has just moved out and you're gonna need complete staging, or maybe you're a homeowner and you already have furniture in your condo, but you're gonna need a stager to come in to give you partial staging. Maybe the table that you have is not ideal for the space or the sofa is old and you may need to chuck it out. Whatever the case may be, full staging, partial staging, the whole point of it is really to give the buyer a sense of what the space can be define different rooms and also to maximize what the use of the space could be as well. If you go into a vacant condo versus a condo, which is the exact same plan, same view, and it is staged, it gives buyers a much better feeling in terms of how the space can be used. The amount of money that's gonna cost you for the staging will be reflected in the sales price and you're always making money back on staging. Sometimes I do get clients that fight me on it, but by the time they finish the staging and we sell the condo, they're glad that they actually did it and then they've actually ended up hiring my stager to do their interior design at the next place because they loved it so much. So number nine on the list, we're getting towards the end, is the pricing strategy. And there's basically three different approaches that you can take. The first approach, which I obviously don't recommend, is to, once you've done your market analysis, figured out the market value, is to list it at a high price, way above market value, and let it sit on the market and see what happens. Typically, those condos don't sell. You end up doing price drop after price drop, and then you end up selling it for less than what it's actually worth. That is one strategy. Don't recommend it, but sometimes you get greedy sellers or unrealistic sellers. I see it all the time. Strategy number one. Strategy number two is to list at or slightly above market value and take offers at any time, basically. So once you've done your research of what you think the market value range is gonna be, price it at that or slightly above that and take offers at any one time. And the third and final approach, if you are in a seller's market, if inventory and the market is low, there's a lot of buyers on the marketplace, it's more of a seller's market, and the interest rates are low as well. These are all different factors that can contribute to a situation where you list the property low, and then you hold back offers on a particular date and try and create a bidding war. 
Now, this is a very, very, very powerful position for a seller to be in because you can leverage the power of all the buyers bringing you offers against each other. I've done this many times, but it does depend on the type of product you have, the location and the conditions of the current market. If you have a small condo in downtown Toronto, that's very common where you'll see many bidding wars on that. If you have a $2 million condo, obviously a lot less buyers in that price point. And number 10, the last one on the list guys, is to make your condo available for showing and to keep it clean and tidy. You would be surprised how many times I try and coordinate my schedule, try and coordinate my client's schedule who are buying, and then try and book an appointment on a property. Sometimes there's restrictions with the times because maybe there's a tenant there which they need 24 hours notice, I get it. Sometimes there could be a baby, I get that too. But if you make it really restrictive, it makes it more difficult for buyers to get in and see the condo. If people don't get in to see the property, you're not gonna be able to sell it. So during the week, I typically recommend for showing times of, to be available for the property to be booked is from 10 a.m. during the week till 8 p.m. and then on the weekends from 10 or 11 a.m. till around 6 p.m. in the evening. I know it can be inconvenient, but you need to be open to have your property viewed to potential buyers so you can get that offer and get a deal. Some of those steps are very common sense. I know that, but nowadays common sense is not very common. Just want to give you some basic ideas in terms of what you can do to maximize your price and so that you're not going to be on the market for too long so you can sell your condo quickly. So I hope you guys found that video useful. If you did, hit that like button, hit the subscribe channel. If you do have any questions about selling your condo, hit me up in the comments below or you can email me directly and I'll try and help you out. For those of you that are looking at selling your condo, I have written a book. My first published book is called The Condo Seller's Playbook. The central guide to selling your condo and in this book I go over some of these strategies and techniques. I go over things that agents do not want you to know and some of the other topics just to kind of give you a quick idea in the book is why condos don't always sell for what they're worth. Some sell below market value, some sell above market value. Signs you have a bad agent. There's a lot of bad agents in the city of Toronto. There's 50, 55,000 and some of them have no clue let me tell you. Um, understanding what you control and what you don't control when it comes to selling your condo some of these things we've talked on in the video another important chapter i touch upon in this book is that you need to understand the mindset of a buyer in today's market a lot more people have a lot more information nowadays everything's online and they're a lot more tech savvy and when it comes to negotiating the actual offer itself and as how to sell your condo for more money. I hope you found that useful. If you want a copy of this book, I'll put a link in the description below and I hope you enjoyed the video and I will catch you next time. Have a good one. See ya.